Good evening, everybody. Uh, which is Sonam said, turn will of Dharma according to the wishing, right? <coughs> so make sure, as I said many times, I'm here at TBC as a strategy partner, not as a, your guru, not as a, your master. I'm very happy to be your study partner. And how I can, you know, turn will of Dharma, because I myself, very ordinary being, also I mean samsara, also I control by all the afflictive motions. Therefore, I cannot <coughs> really you know, turn will of Dharma. Second, also, I cannot teach the class according to your wishing. Because in order to teach the Dharma, teach the class according to, you know, the people wishing, people, the, the tendency, I must know your capacity, I must know your ability. I don't, you know, uh, know anything about your ability, your wishing, your mental disposition, because I don't have, you know, omniscience. I haven't achieved omniscience. But compared with <coughs> you and me, yes, I study Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy for a long time. You have been studying, but not for many years, you know, from that point of view, I have a bit, you know, bit better knowledge. So this, I can happy to share you, happy to, you know, introduce you, which is I know. And also, we all, you know, make sure because most of you, all of you, except me, <laughs> been very busy, always be very busy. You know, among the us, I'm the most free person to go here and there. Yes, you have been busy since morning till evening. Still, you, you know, always try your best to attend the Dharma class, which is very good. Also, you must. Always you must know why, you know, you attend the Lamrim class, why you need to study Lamrim, what is uh, your, <coughs> you know, the purpose, or what is the, your main reason to achieve, uh, uh, attend the Lamrim class. Therefore, we must think, I want to attend the Lamrim class, I want to study Lamrim, I want to study Dharma, because I want to be happy. Not happy only, <clears throat> you know, few hours, few days, few years, few life. I want to be happy forever. So how I can be, you know, how we can be happy forever, then we need to think, we need to think about the opposite of you know, uh, happiness. Opposite of the, the lasting happiness is the temporal happiness. We still consider happiness, but it's actually it is suffering. So in order to wish to achieve the lasting ultimate happiness, we must recognize, you know, the opposite of happiness, which is sufferings, right? Sufferings. So in order to recognize, in order to wish to free from suffering, in order to wish to achieve uh, happiness, we must know the opposite of happiness, which is suffering. Also, we must know the cause and condition of suffering. Therefore, <coughs> in the past, we study very basic about, you know, the varieties of karma, the positive, negative, within the positive have many types, negative have many types. Then also 
we studied how the karma you know accumulated how the karma uh, produce sufferings so that time we learn <coughs> all the karmas you know motivated by ignorance affli- affli- emotions that mean karma we accumulate based on ignorance and based on affective emotions or based on some positive mental attitudes ignorance and karma the karma is motivated by the affective emotions then also we learn how the karma you know arise give arise all the sufferings and problems then we studied <clears throat> the completely about the 12 factors then after that we studied uh, how you know we really eliminate the sufferings then we studied you know the <clears throat> uh, the forward uh, order of the two links independence ignorance karma consciousness so and so how you know the suffering arise then also we learn how we can stop you know the suffering the suffering can be stopped if we able to stop you know aging and death then aging and death can be stopped if we stop you know you know taking uh, rebirth in samsara then all the way finally in order to stop aging and death in order to stop you know taking rebirth in samsara karma then finally at the point we need to uh you know get rid of ignorance there's many we study about <clears throat> four noble truths based on the trailing interdependence therefore you know when you do meditation you must do meditation based on 12 factors you know the forward way and the the reverse way then we study very important one it is so 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 important we need to generate we need to cultivate uh, the renown session if you have you know very artificial renown session the wish to free from suffering wish to eliminate of you know cause of suffering is also become very artificial therefore we need you know very pure very perfect renunciation then wish to overcome from suffering wish to eliminate the samsara right renunciation then there's a um, <clears throat> mis conception from someone somebody said yes if you practice the mahayana path it is uh, it is correct it is very you know appropriate to say generate renunciation right if you practice the mahayana path if you practice the bodhisattva path that it is not you know appropriate is not correct to say you know uh, practice renunciation he said you know the person said bodhisattva you know who practice bodhicitta then don't need to practice renunciation is again with the bodhisattva path then lama tsongkha ba respond no it is your wrong you know interpretation if you practice mahayana path also you need to practice renunciation right but even though you practice renunciation after you become a buddha still the you know the person who after become a buddha still remain in samsara stay with the all sentient being because of the great compassion right for example you know the mother has a very luxury life the mother really really care the child and the child is suffering in child in hospital the mother you know always stay with the child in hospital 
because due to the affection, due to the compassion. Same thing, Buddhist sadhu practice renunciation. They fully renounce with the samsara, but still remain in samsara because of the compassion. Right? Then we study about, you know, Buddhist sadhu wa, or hearer, solitary realizer, everybody must practice <coughs> renunciation. So when we study about renunciation, we should not think, yes, Buddhist Sattva need to practice renunciation. Hearer, solitary realizer need to practice renunciation. We should not think, I, I no need to practice. Okay? Because, you know, the Dharma class is not class as a, like yoga, as a, you know, dancing class, singing class. No. The Dharma class is very important because we wish to achieve Buddhahood. We want to be happy forever. How? First, renunciation. Based on the Four Noble Truth. Renunciation, right? Renunciation. Therefore, what does mean renunciation? Then remember the analogy. <coughs> analogy. The northern child. What? Huh? Yeah, in English, they call trumpet. Huh? Turnip, turnip, right? Radish. This was the, you know, it was the analogy mentioned one of the, you know, the Kadamba master. For example, northern part of, you know, Tibet, they are very, well nomad. They have this total live as a nomad with the animal. And they, you know, didn't have, you know, Tsampa, the roasted barley powder. It's Sampa. It's very important. It's very rare for them. Then remember the child is very hungry. The child asks food to the mother. The mother gave what? Turnip. The child said, I don't want. Then the second the mother gave the, the roasted in the fried turnip. The child said, I don't want. Then frozen one, I don't want. He fully, you know, disgust, disgust, right? For the turnip. He doesn't want. Whatever you give, everything is turnip. That's why whatever we see beautiful object, beautiful things, you know. Then when we see beautiful object, beautiful, you know, attractive, beautiful person, suddenly we generate what? Attachment. Wow, it's so nice. I want to be like that. Wow, it's so nice. I want it. S suddenly we generate attachment, desire. That time, what, you, what we need to remember? The turnip. No, no, no. It still is, you know, samsara. It is nature of suffering. Then, this kind of mind, you know, the renounce with the everything you must need within you, within you for 24 hours. Why are you sleeping? You should not have any sense of attachment. You should not have sense of any, you know, like clinging. Because look at, in our lifetime, you have seen so many, you know, rich family. They were very rich. Within a few years, they become, you know, same as you. Sometimes they become totally like a nothingness. Become very poor. If you True clinging on your belongings. When you lost the, your, you know, your property, your money, your house, your car, it's so difficult to overcome. Still, you really crush attachment with the, your belongings. Then attach, you know, attachment with the, your families, your friends. Your, also, you must care. You must take care. You must look after your friends and family, brother and sister. You know, must care must carry with a sense of compassion, not sense of attachment. If you have a too strong attachment towards you know, your you know, sibling, your brother and sister, your child, your, even though you are a teacher, then when something happens, also it's so difficult to overcome the sorrow. Without you know, attachment, without craving, you know, the negative craving, you must respect your teacher. You must care your family. You must share your things with your family, friends, and brothers and children. 
you know, should not have a sense of too attached, should not have a too attached because of problem. There's been, you know, finally, everything around you is there, but it's never lasting forever, right? Never lasting. Even though, let's say, you know, the relationship between, you know, guru and disciple is very important, right? Important. It doesn't mean the guru, the guru can stay with the disciple forever. Cannot. The disciple also cannot stay with the guru forever. Therefore, at the Buddha lifetime, you know, I think the Sharaputra, the, the uh, uh, Shariputra, the Mongalyana, I think they were passed away before Buddha Shakyamuni. Because they knew Buddha will, you know, passing, pass away very soon. They cannot really bear to see he is passing away. That's why they live before Buddha. That means, look at this kind of you know, relationship between teachers is very important, but they will separate it. So have to separate. You know, all your things and belonging also belongs to you, but not forever. The house, the place, the body, nothing can, you know, belongs to you forever. That means the renunciation. Then after renunciation, then what we, we studied? Huh? Huh? After renunciation, we study about what? Twelve factor. Then there's, uh, I think, three. So this means, you know, the, um, the measure of the determination to be free, we, uh, we, I just plan, explain. Then nature of the leading to the liberation. This means there's a two headings very important, page number 335, 335. Right? The kind of life through which you held sexual existence. This means, let's say, you wish to free from suffering. You wish to achieve, you know, that ultimate lasting happiness, how you can achieve. There, there's a, you know, condition, right? For example, if you are a human, yes, you being as a human, if there's no any, you know, you know, Buddha Dharma around you, even though you being a human, you don't know how to overcome suffering, how to overcome problem, how to achieve happiness. That means you have to be free from what at do you remember leisure and opportunity. Then you have to be free from at huh? yeah. What are they? Number one, to be born with the wrong view. Yes, you you are being a human. If you have a totally wrong views, wrong perception you cannot achieve lasting happiness. You have to be free from, you know, reborn with the wrong views. The next one, without conqueror's word. That means the conquer words, means the Buddha words, the Buddha teaching like a medicine, right? Medicine, right? Medicine. In order to cure the sickness, you need a medicine. If there's no any medicine around you, when you're really seriously sick, then you will dry, right? That means you have to be, there must be, we have to be born where there's a Buddha teaching. The next one, or an animal. Yes, if you are born in animal, you know, then you don't know anything. You know, you know, the how to get food and drink and sleeping, that's it. <clears throat> that means you have to be free from the eight, uh, a spacious kind of life. The opposite is a spacious kind of life, right? This is what kind of life you must have. Then mean, so you must be born as a human. Then you need to uh, generate the renunciation. 
right it's so important to free from all the you know uh, unfortunate kind of life then next we study about uh, uh, the the kind of path you cultivate that means yeah the suffers what kind of life we must have in order to practice dharma right for example in order to go like a school the child must have a proper hearing power proper you know seeing power also the proper the child must have a you know phys- good physical condition if the child doesn't have all this kind of condition the child cannot go to school right same thing in order to practice dharma you you must be born as a human also being a human not only being a human you have to be free from all this unfortunate condition then yes right now we are we are being a human right we are free from the wrong view we believe in karma we believe in next life we believe in you know buddha dharma also we believe in the true truths so we don't have a wrong view we are free from wrong view also we are we met all the buddha teaching right so we have a two condition condition number 3 you are not we are not animal we are not hungry ghost we are not hell being we are not uncultured person in you know border region that's mean that's mean you border region mean is where you where you are born there's no religion no culture you know you are totally barbarian we are not then we are not you know uh, stupid we are very intelligent right also we are not being as a, you know the the deity of long life that means we we are completely free from all this unfortunate life but still we need to practice the path right then next subject look at what kind of the kind of path you cultivate to held sacred existence it has a how many paths three paths what are they please everybody read number 1 of enumeration of the three training that very important how you can you know cultivate what kind of path you must cultivate in order to help in order to free from sexual existence number 1 certainty of the an in enumeration of the three training number 2 three training number 3 trainings that means three trainings right three training very important that means we have a you know as a buddhist all our practice any kind of buddhist practice must include into three trainings therefore buddha taught you know Uh, give give many teachings right all teaching we can include into teaching practice include into three trainings trainings okay all the practice all the teachings all the buddha teaching all the buddhist teaching all the buddhist texts you know like uh, scriptures include into three pitika right three basket three pitika right three pitika what are the three basket or you know three pitika what are they vinaya basket ah uh, sutra basket abhi dharma okay abhi dharma vinaya and sutra pitika this means all buddha teaching only teach three things three mental tra- three trainings that's why all the teaching include into three kinds of teaching first the vinaya pitika you know vinaya basket in english they call basket vinaya teaching the vinaya teaching teach what the vinaya vinaya mean all the vows and precept vinaya 
this mean look at so we want to run a school we want to open a school we we we, we need a students yes we build a school we have a lot of student then what we need to do number one discipline right discipline yes we build a school we have lot of students no discipline then what will happen that is some teacher come 10 o'clock some student come 3 o'clock then how we can run the school how we can control the school that's why discipline important that's why first buddha you know very much emphasize about pratika vinaya pratika vinaya you know in you know, a basket is teach the all the discipline particularly the discipline of our monks and nun then second ah huh? yeah sutra basket sutra pitika then sutra pitika is you know teach what explain teach introduce all the practices in practice of compassion renunciation buddhi all the practice mindfulness so and so teach this what we call you know sutra pitika the sutra pitika content is mainly about all the practices all the practices right then third one abhi dharma abhi dharma the abhi dharma explain what mainly i say mainly okay mainly importantly selflessness emptiness and the wisdom paths this mean all our practice include into you know vinaya practice then mindfulness training then the wisdom this mean all the buddha teaching include into three pratika all the practices which is we have been practice include into three trainings right that means look at the certainty of the unumeration of the three trainings number two determination of the order there's a order number one vinaya number two vinaya practice sutraya practice then abhidharma practice right three practice that mean determination is show this order order of the three trainings number three the nature of the three trainings like the nature of the three trainings now you can see here uh next there's a uh, stanza from the uh, nagarjuna look a friendly letter you know the nagarjuna wrote a text uh, the uh, teaching name what friendly letter this mean during the nagarjuna time there was a king there was a king the king was his friend then nagarjuna actually wrote a long letter he says a uh, maybe 30 40 pages the long letter it is good to be king also it is so important to practice dharma it is so important to be dharma king not just not just a king this me three look at this what you had or clothing suddenly to catch fire you should still see a sight extinguishing the fire right this mean if you are you know your head you know catch of fire if your clothes catch of fire what do you do suddenly you you know get up you distinguish right is di- ex- extinction extinction the fire if you not try to extinction extinct the fire what will happen it burn you is burn you right that's mean when you feel when you recognize now i'm getting angry getting angry you must stop you must stop to arise the angry you should not you know eras is more further more that mean look like you notice your your clothes is catch of fire you just still remain there right therefore when you see when you feel when you notice when you recognize yes 
my angry is arising. It start to come, start to come, right? You can feel it, right? Do you remember how you get angry at the beginning? You feel bit <laughs> shake your body, right? you become more stronger, right? That means you know is anger is arising, right? When you ch look at, it, even though. It's very important when you watch, I think most of you watch news. Sometimes the reporter asks questions, like all the minister, whatever. When they ask questions, you can see the expression. When they ask a nice question, the face is very relaxed. The, you know, the hand always remain very gently. When they ask very difficult question, very, you know, uh, what, what you call taji, taji subject question, then you can see the face shaking, face changing, and also you always check the hands are like moving finger like this. That means no. now he or she is getting angry. Always check the face. Suddenly it's a little busy, you know, shaking here and there. Express change, particularly hands, if you look like, like, huh? like this. This means you are getting angry. This means you must know I am getting angry. Then you must change the mental state, stop to, you know, eras angry. That's why he's saying like that. That's me how we can stop. Look at, you should, uh, and stop to eradicate birth. There's uh, no purpose higher than this. That's mean, actual dharma practice. Yes, you know, doing prostration, recitation, chanting, making, offering are very good, very important. The most important, always, always watch your thoughts, right? Watch your thoughts. Getting angry, stop. If you don't stop, if you don't try to stop angry, the angry, angry become very strong. It's become too strong. Then you argue, farting, you know, bragging, throwing, everything happens is too strong. Already become very high that you cannot control. This why you must stop from the beginning. Right. This is the most, most important practice, you know, compared with recitation, chanting. Recitation is very e easy, right? Your whole mala, or you, your money is around you, you know, wandering everywhere. You say, Om Mani, Bhemi, Om Mani, Om Mani, Om Mani, Om Mani, Om Your money is going everywhere in the supermarket, in the coffee shop, right? Look at, controlling anger is not like really recitation. It's, it's arising. You are pushing down. Anger is pushing up. You are pushing down. It's not easy. That moment, if you are able to control, this is the most important practice. Therefore, it's here. Free from the... Sorry, this one. Uh, there's no purpose higher than this. Right? Now, we must know what does mean Buddhist. What is the Buddhist practice? Therefore, in, in, in Tibet, there was a practitioner, somebody asked, Venerable, what you have been practicing for many years in the calf? What kind of practice have you been doing every day? His reply, I don't have any practice. I always hold, you know, hold a, a big kind of a, a sore, big knife. I always ho hold in the wisdom sore. Always was you know waiting in front of the door of the negative thoughts, in front you know in front of the door of the negative thoughts. That means he always watched the mind, wisdom, anger eras. He cut attachment eras. Cut. He said, I don't have practice. Only this is my practice. Then as a Buddhist, you know now what, you know. Me people very much emphasizing about the uh, Buddhist culture, recitation, chanting, making offering, visiting all the temples, all the center, all the holy. But most important, we forget. We forget practice the dharma. We forget to control the you know negative thoughts. Therefore, you can look at here. There is no purpose higher than this. Then how I can control all the thoughts? Then here. Through ethical discipline, right? This is this mean vinaya. Through ethical discipline, number one. Number two, concentration. concentration. Number three, wisdom. This mean 
ethical discipline training, you know, training about concentration, training about wisdom. If you training, if you have these three trainings, then you achieve nirvana, right? Undefiled state of the peace and restraint. This is deadly. This is that means you must practice three trainings: ethical discipline, concentration, wisdom. This is the you know three mental trainings, three trainings. Now look at next one: the certainty of unumeration of the three training. This explain in the in, in terms of the aspect stage of the discipline in the mind, the result. That means there's a three kind of, you know, reason why three mental three training is very important. In terms of three aspect, right? The number one, what? Stage of the disciplining the mind. If you want to make a discipline your mind, you need a three trainings. Also, we put three training according to the result. Result. Also, we put you know, we need to pack the three training according to the object that eliminate. Right. That means, as a Buddhist, we need to pack these three trainings. All the Buddha teaching include into three pratika. There's a Order number one, number one, ethical discipline. Number two, concentration. Number three, wisdom. Right? Without its ethical discipline, you cannot concentrate. Without concentration, you cannot have a wisdom. We should not mix up wisdom and you know clever, clever. Yes, we everybody very clever, right? We are, but we don't have a wisdom. That means there's an order, ethical discipline, concentration, wisdom. In order to have a wisdom, we need to practice concentration. In order to practice concentration, we need an ethical discipline. Without ethical discipline, without having any piece of land, you try to grow you know, like a plant. You cannot. Right? That means discipline. Result, object that eliminates. Number one, the stage of disciplining the mind. So why it is so important to discipline the mind? Why? Why it is so important to discipline the mind? Why? Why? Huh? No, no. Why, for example, let's say, why it is so important to eat healthy food in order to avoid all the sickness, right? If you eat, you know, bad food, a lot of bad food, a lot of junk food, you will have all kinds of sickness. Why we need to practice, why we need to, you know, make a discipline for the mind? Why we need, a, you know, the mental discipline? Huh? Yeah, if, if emotion we arise. Most important, we can say, you can see within your f family, you can see within your friends, neighbors, co worker, you know, colleague. Within your family, everybody like, you know, someone. Really like, let's say you have a, you know, t like five members in your family. Everybody like brother the brother, or maybe everybody like the, you know, sister, or everybody like one of them, because the person is very honest, very gentle, very compassionate, right? Everybody, you know, doesn't like someone, because it's a very short temper, very angry, very negative person, you hate the person within your family. All of them, your family, why, why you really, really like, really respect one? Why you really hate someone? Why? Because of the mind. All our problems, based on you know, our daily problem, you say, I'm not happy. What are you talking about? You're talking about your mind is no peace. Right? You say, oh, today I'm very happy. 
you are not talking about physical body, you are talking about your mind. Your mind is very peace. Your mind is very peaceful, you are very happy. Your mind is very destructive, then you are not happy. Or your friends or family has a lot of negative thoughts. The person always make a problem in the family. That means whatever happened you know, around us, happy, unhappy, everything created by mind. Mind, right? Mind. That's why what Buddha said, you know, the mind is principle, always, always go before all action. That's why first we need to control a mind. For example, you are driving a car. Car. When you're driving a car, what do you do? You hold the st string, right? Why? If you don't hold properly, it's go drag. You go accident. Right? Then your feet, one of the feet always on the brake. Brake. Brake control. Right? That uh, the string is change your direction. Then ne other leg where you put accelerator, right? Accelerator, acceler accelerator. We call it in India. That means, look at if you forget to put your hand on the brake, suddenly you cannot stop. Right? There was these three things very important. Therefore, it look like you know you your foot always on the brake. That means you can, any time you can stop the car. That means first you control your mind. Always control your mind, they can, you can control everything. Right? You can control everything. That's why number one, so important to control the mind. It is so important to discipline the mind. Therefore, look at the three training bring to completion all types of yogis and yogi, yoginis. Yogi and yoginis, as follow. The training in the ethical discipline makes a detective mind undistract, 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 right? Distract, distract, and opposite is undistracted. Right? If you have a, for example, discipline, what does it mean discipline? We have a physical discipline, verbal discipline, Mental discipline, right? Discipline. Therefore, as a, as a you know, like a monk and nun, first they take a vows, precept. There's a four, you know, root, you know, vows, four root precept. For example, you know, not killing any living being, not killing any human being. If you have a commitment in front of the Buddha, in front of the, your guru, say, okay, I'm not killing anybody. You have a discipline, right? Physical discipline, not killing. Then, when you think I want to kill someone, you must remember, I have the precept, I have the vow. It stop you to engage into the killing action. Killing action, right? Therefore, you know, destructive and undistracted. So without uh, ethical discipline, your mind is always what? Distracted, distracted. With the uh, discipline, you have become, your mind become undistracted. Therefore, you know, ethical discipline. The training in concentration or mental training, you can call uh, training in concentration or the mental training is balance in unbalanced mind, right? That means first you need the physical uh, discipline. Then we, we, when you have a, you know, ethical discipline, then your, your mind become very undistracted. Do you know? For example, you know, according to uh, Buddhist tradition, for example, you should not kill anybody. Then, so number two, should not steal any valuable object. Should, you should not, you know, not allowed, you not, you know, supposed to or allowed to steal anything. Then suddenly you saw some, you know, expensive thing, you saw what valuable object is or somewhere, then you, you thought, oh, I must get it, I must take it. 
your mind thought, then suddenly you remember, no, no, I have a precept, I have a vow. Then you stop, you know, the thoughts, thoughts. Then you become, your mind, the undistracted, uh, the distracted distri mind become undistracted. Then through mental training, your mind become what? Balance, right? Balance, unbalanced. That means if you have a mental training, your mind become balanced. If you, if you don't have a concentration, your, your mind become very unbalanced. Right? That means no concentration, then look at, if you're thinking or, or like bad thing, there is go continuously a few hours. Then your big mind becomes very unbalanced. Right? You keep thinking on one direction. The other direction is a very negative direction. That becomes unbalanced. If you have a mental training, then your mind becomes very balanced. That means, look at again, you're just thinking about compassion. First, you focus on compassion. Second, your mind becomes distracted. Then, you bring back. Then again, unbalanced become balance. Right? Balance. Then number three, the training in wisdom liberates and unliberates. Yeah, liberated, right? That means, yes, you have a ethical discipline, then your become, mind becomes very undistracted. Yes, you have a concentration, then your mind becomes very balanced. If you don't have a wisdom, then what happens? You are always unliberated. Your mind becomes very unliberated. Therefore, we need a wisdom. How the you know the wisdom training become your become your mind liberated? Liberated. How? How? Look at without wisdom, anger arises, attachment arises, all the afflictive emotion arises because of the ignorance. Ignorance, right? Ignorance, right? Ignorance. Then, how we can control, how we can get rid of the ignorance because of the wisdom, right? Wisdom. When you have a wisdom, then you know the ignorance is mistaken mind, right? Mistaken mind. Once you know that your mind is mistaken mind, then for you very easy to recognize the truth, the reality. When you realize, re, re, uh, realize the truth, you know, reality of the truth emptiness, then you are already start to free from the samsara. Then your mind become liberated. That means three mental training, right? In order to have a Undistracted, undistracted mind, you need to practice ethical discipline. In order to have a balanced mind, you need to practice concentration. In order to have a liberated mind, you need to practice wisdom. What does mean wisdom? Wisdom here referred to, wisdom referred to the mind which is relies, selflessness and emptiness. This is the, you know, uh, the certainty of the unnumeration of the three training. Now the determination of the order. So uh, uh, the result. Uh, this, uh, sorry, this uh, the training bring to the completion of the text of yogi as yogi follow. The training is Number two is the result, right? Yes. The discipline. Then the result. So what are the result of the three trainings? The result of the ethical discipline that have no degenerated are the two happy rebirth of the desire realms and human or deity. The result of the ethical discipline, uh, the result of the ethical discipline that has degenerated is rebirth in the where desire realms. That means if you always be ethical person. Ethical person, you are always accumulating positive action, right? Positive action. The, res the result can be 
human and dirty realms. That means higher realms. If you degenerate, I mean, if you, you know, break your precept, break your vows, then you will miserable realms. And also you should not think, uh, many people a bit worry, I think, oh, if I do kind of negative action, then we feel, oh, Buddha get angry me. Right? Many people think this way, oh, Buddha will get angry, Buddha upset about me, Buddha angry about me. No. Buddha never get angry. If you do a lot of bad things, Buddha never get angry. No, Buddha never get upset. When you do, when you do a lot of bad things, what happens? You, you got the bad habits. Right? You have got bad habits. Then you can see within your friend, the friend who has always bad habit, the friend has always problem, always in trouble. The, the friend who has a good habits, good you know, mental attitude, the friend always be happy, the, the, the friend never has any you know, problems. That means if you degenerate the ethical discipline, then you will rebirth in the miserable realms. The result of the training of the mind are the two happy rebirth to the higher than desire. That's again same thing. The mental mind, if you are able to control your mind, if you have a concentration, again, you know, you're born in the higher realms. Particularly, the deity form or formless is, you know, higher than the human. Ethical discipline bring both human and higher realms. Then, uh, the concentration, you, you bring higher than the human life. The result of the training in wisdom is a liberation. Now, in brief, the result of the three training are has a two goal: highest studies and the human ordinary. That is, I think, conclusion. The next, we study about the object that they eliminate. Right? We study about what are the result, what are the consequences of the three trainings. Number three the objects that they eliminate. The former teacher asserted that in relation to the object that eliminates, what eliminates? Affliction. Right? The turning are three falls. According to the whether they are eliminated affliction, number one, weakening, 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 right? become more weaker. Number two, surprising. Number three, eradicating. Look at now, when you know very well what are the result of the you know three trainings, the good result. The opposite also you must know what are the bad result. Not practice the three trainings, right? Now, what what's the main benefit I can have if I if I practice? Three training, training. That means if you practice three trainings, you can control affliction, emotion, for example, anger, attachment. How you can control? Through ethical discipline, what will happen? Weakening, right? Weakening them. That means once you have the precept, once you have a, a vows, that means all the earthly emotion already become weaker. Otherwise, you can do whatever you want, right? You want to kill, you can kill. Because you don't have a vows, you don't have a discipline. Whatever you drink, you can drink. Then your mind becomes very, what? Violence. Right? When you have a discipline, for example, when you, you, when you are in the class, in your school, right? In school, I don't think in class you can, you can scream. I don't think you are allowed to, you know, talk too much. You cannot, you wish to, but you cannot. You be, be remain very quiet. But in the mind, you still wish to talk, wish, wish to play. But you're not allowed because of discipline, ethical discipline, right? This means already emotion arising, is become already weak. You are not allowed to arise, you know, very strongly. Weakening. Then through the concentration, what happened? Surprising. 
yeah, surprising, the manifest form, right? Let me look at anger arise. You notice it's arising, then you need to practice what? Compassion, compassion. Then, if you practice compassion, anger, going to surprise. Not the, from the root. This way, what do you call it here? No, no. Manifest forms. Manifest form. This means anger arises where at the beginning you cannot feel it. Other people cannot see it. Anger, right? When the anger becomes very strong, then it's completely, you know, manifest. At that moment, if you practice compassion, that the manifest level of anger is going to reduce. That's meaning, you know, suppressing the manifest form through practice of concentration. Then, through practice of wisdom, eradicating the, their seeds. Right? That means ethical discipline help you to, you know, make weaker all the affect emotions. How? For example, you have a strong desire to say, you know, drink alcohol. Right? You have a strong desire to drink alcohol. If you have an ethical discipline, then the desire becomes weaker. You remember, I should not, I should not supposed to, I'm not allowed to, then become weaker. For example, you have a discipline, you know, not go to watch movie every day. Okay, say so then you it's okay you can watch once a week. Then every day you don't have the mind to you know watch movie every day. Right? That means the desire already become weaker. Then concentration is totally surprised. It looks like you don't have anger. For example, you always practice compassion. Right, always practice compassion towards Mr. A. You know, first you don't like, you know, Mr. A, you are very angry with Mr. A or Mrs. A. You are very angry. Then somehow you change your mentality, then you, you accept, you know, the person is nice, the person is good. I feel, you know, he or she is no good because it is my misunderstanding. It is because my misperception. Actually, he or she is very nice, very kind. Then slowly you generate compassion. Then the anger towards, you know, the person A become weaker. You, then you all, always, always practice compassion towards the person. Then finally, you feel, you look like you don't have a angry for the Mr. A or Mrs. A. Look like no more angry. Still there. It's become what? Very minimized, right? Minimized. Become very weak. But the root is still there. The seed is still there. The root and the seeds can be eradicated through practice of wisdom. Look at now. What is our practice as a Buddhist? You need to fight with the whom? You always need to fight with afflictive emotion. You need to fight with the anger, attachment, desire, hatred, ignorance. You always need to fight. Right? This is our practice. How you can fight? You need a three uh, what do you call weapons. Three weapons. Weapons of ethical discipline. Weapons of concentration. concentration. Weapons of wisdom. Within the three weapons, which one is more powerful? The wisdom weapon. It cut the root. Then, the concentration weapon is not that powerful as a wisdom weapon. It's, it's reduced. Look like you cut the branch, cut the branch, cut the branch, finally you cut until the, you know, the root, you know, the ground level. But if you dig the ground, you still see the root is there. Right? That means, yes, if you only concentrate, if you only do, you know, the concentration, meditation, only it can subdue, but cannot eliminate from the root. Then compare with, you know, cons you know, concentration and ethical discipline, which is more powerful? 
concentration more powerful compared with the ethical discipline. Ethical discipline make you discipline, you know, should not think, should not do, should not this, 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 this. But it cannot really surprise. It cannot really, you know, control the manifest anger. Because you, in your heart you say anger. For example, as a monk and nun, you know, you should not, you, you are not allowed to have a physical relationship with anybody. But in the mind, when you see some, you know, attractive person, your man and woman, you, oh, as a, even though they took a vow, you feel, oh, I should meet, I should do something, right? It's a mind, they, they feel. But due to the uh, precept, what happened? It stopped. Still, you know, look like, you know, we Tibetans say, the fire burning in my heart. The fire is burning, but smoke is not coming from my mouth. <laughs> right? It's a corn member, young, can do a meter. It's in your mind, all the afflictive emotions is, you know, there. But due to the vows, ethical, ethical discipline, you cannot see the smoke. <laughs> right? It doesn't mean all the monks, they are, you know, very high practitioner. They have an ethical discipline. Due to that, you cannot see the very obviously. Because they don't practice the concentration. Yeah, right? Concentration. If they practice ethical discipline, then concentration, then look like, you know, the, uh, the person who has a vow, who has a uh, precept, look like he or she doesn't have any negative thoughts. But still, the root is there. Right? Therefore, you know, uh, the object that eliminate. That's meaning, uh, first, uh, beginning, number two, surprising the, their manifest form. Okay, you must complete the sentence. Surprising their manifest form. Manifest mean? The obvious one. You know, you can see, you can feel it. Then the seeds. This is the, also we need the three turning in order to eliminate the afflict emotions. Then uh, B, the determination of the order of the three turning. This means the order is always fixed. Number one, ethical discipline. Number two, station. Number three, wisdom. But we, we all, we everybody mistaken. We totally don't care about ethical discipline. We say, I want to do meditation, I want to do concentration. You try, try, you cannot. Because what was the lagging? Lagging of ethical discipline. Therefore, you know, Singapore is interesting. When you, uh, I saw, I went to one of the hospital around the Kadip. Kadip. What, which hospital it is? Oh, yeah. It's one of the clean and beautiful, right? You can see all the window, door has a plant, green, right? Why they cannot grow a big tree on the window? Because there's no land. We used to grow a big tree in the, on the window. You cannot because there's no land. That's why... We all Buddhists say, oh, I want to do meditation. Oh, I always do meditation, but I cannot. What's wrong? No ethical discipline. That's why you cannot do concentration. Right? That's why first ethical discipline. Then you can do the concentration. Once you're able to do concentration, then you can able to practice the wisdom. That mean? The determination of the order of the three training. The order of the three training is demonstrated de in the passing form sutra. Right? This, look at sutra. Ethical discipline is very steady root. Right? Root. Please remember root. Ethical discipline is a very steady root. Then concentration is the Delight in the essence state of the mind. Then, in the wisdom, the view of the noble being and the view of the sceneries are for of the respectively. That means ethical discipline is look like root. Then the concentration is the 
what look like what state or state of the mind the wisdom is look like what view of the sinners are accurate and the forsake in the respectively this mean is look like result now look at among the three among this ethical discipline is the root because the other two grow out of it please remember please read ethical root other two grow out of it please read also please remember ethical discipline and also you know ethical discipline many people think you know oh i don't want to take the precept is so difficult to maintain right think this way when you take a uh, you know uh, it, when you take a precept or vows what the f- as a lay person how many precept you need to take at 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 our you know like a five this is a different tradition let's say at what are the at killing stealing sexual misconduct then lying alcohol you know alcoholics or uh, you know toxin then number five, number 6 huh how many hope you taking the le- leprosen huh chinese five singaporean how many <laughs> <laughs> you are no chinese right <laughs> a <laughs> joke like a five according to tibet yes sir. no no killing stealing and mix a uh, sexual misconduct ectoxing uh, lying then drinking alcoholics the five right then every six i think uh you can be count you know not wearing uh, expensive clothes expensive jewels so and so five which one you cannot you know take which one you cannot take which perceive you cannot take which perceive which vow you cannot take killing huh yes you say i can killing refer to the killing of human of course nobody is going to kill human right that's why dalai lama said if you take a vow is good since you not engage to killing any action you always accumulating positive action if you without you know if you haven't taken the vows you not killing all your life you are not really having the virtuous action in singapore when you kill someone what happen definitely dead person you right you you will dead you you put this person they going to kill you yes you must take a vows so then you know, killing so then stealing if you still you know uh, if you still uh, valuable object they they you know the people come you know uh, complains to the police police will come also you we need to go to prison then sexual misconduct also must remember if you are married is very clear I, i need to clear if you are married then you always have a relation with the your partner you know wife and husband you should not have a, any physical relationship with the other than the your partner if you are married is better in order to you know maintain the healthy relationship that means you always go with your partner right then you have a always healthy relationship you, why then you trust each other you trust each other you become more honest each other if you have a if you are married yeah do you know when married people when, when during the married while well, they offer the ring why lock. huh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah lock lock each other lock each other you know tight each other cannot separate <laughs> but we tibetan we you know we don't have the tradition now yes then look you know in the practical le- level think about you know if you are married but just the most most you know better to have a relationship with your you know partner if you are not married if you are not married then if you have a you know physical relationship one i'm not you not consider you are having sexual misconduct 
because you don't have you know kind of a particular you know like partner then you go with anybody is not considered as a sexual misconduct it's not it you know misread misconduct but when you engage in the this kind of relationship what at the beginning you have to automatically generate a lot of desire and attachment right then number 3 stealing yes if you steal one time two time then people won't trust you when you go when you go with the, your friend your friend always suspect you when you go with your friend if somebody stole something they still they suspect you that mean you know stealing no good then you know the alcohol drinking you know toxin they call other name toxicant drink you know alcohol traditionally look at in the ancient time all the drink alcohol you know I, i'm not sure this beer or not all alcohol is quite you know clean quite uh, healthy healthy nowadays we never know what kind of drink they put us what kind of thing they mix this why many people got cancer throat cancer lung cancer heart cancer you know stomach cancer they drink so many kinds of thing and alcohol they add so many stone things to become you know like a uh, drunk actually no good for your health if you drink every day then you drink more then you spend your money more about the drink how much cost for one bottle the cheapest one how much to show che niti tawla 350 Huh? Yeah, in India, yeah, yeah. everybody know. Don't hesitate. The cheapest one, how much? Three hundred fifty. Fifty cents is how big? This big, right? You drink one bottle is not enough. Huh? Are you talking the the uh, the beer juice? Either beer. How much? Two dollar. Yeah, two seventy. Yeah, be honest. Good. Then, if you drink every day, one month, how much you need to spend? Three, 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 three. Three into thirty. Ninety, hundred dollar. Hundred dollar, you can buy, you know, very nice dress. That dress you can wear few months or few years. And if you drink, you know, the alcohol, if you satisfy your hungry, it's okay. but still you need to eat right that means just waste your money also you not good for your health that's why also you you know you can take the precept about no drinking any alcohol then also uh, also i need to clear here drinking alcohol is good or bad i ask you question i'm asking to you is good or bad Huh? Actually, uh, you neither positive nor negative. Drink alcohol, okay? But killing, killing, always negative, always bad. Drinking alcohol, bad or you know, good or bad or no bad, Buddha doesn't mention very clearly. as a monk and nun there are no any exception no exception if you are sick you should not allow if the doctor say you going to die is you must you should not take any alcohol right generally is neither positive nor negative after you take a vows if you take drink alcohol is against you no know, good generally neither positive nor negative that's why many people say oh you are buddhist you should not drink alcohol it's not a good no good reason right so also this one and the sexual misconduct also you know due to the uh, uh desire due to the attachment you commit a lot of you know negative uh, mental negative action is 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 considered as a bad in naturally we could also is another good another bad neither positive nor that is a neutral 
after you have taken vow, if you do the sexual misconduct, then what happened is again with your vows. Then we consider it as a bad. Naturally, it's a neutral sexual misconduct, you know, uh, taking you know, alcohol. The killing, stealing is always bad. Therefore, many people say, as a Buddhist, you, sh you, you, you know, you're not a lot. But you should not drink is good. If we should not say you are not a lot. But Buddha said very clearly, as a monk and nun, you should not. But one of the Buddha Sutra said, Buddha said very clearly, if you are taking alcohol, Buddha said very clearly, one of the sutra, only one is, if you are taking alcohol, you should not consider I am your teacher. I am not consider you are my disciple. This may look like, you know, if you drink alcohol, our relationship is finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah, said. That means look at uh, related to the precept, you know. If you already has taken the precept, very good. If you haven't taken in the future, if there's a chance, you must take. Why? Uh, since you have taken the you know precept, then you are not drinking alcohol, not doing all the bad things, then you are continuously accumulating the positive actions. Without taking all the except, you are not engaged in any this action. You are not engaging, but you are not accumulating any positive actions. This is the difference. Lying is a very bad. You always lying, right? <laughs> you say, "Have you done your homework?" She said, "Yes." Actually, actually she. She did it. It's always lying. <laughs> it's not lying. Huh? It's just uh, the excuse. Huh? <laughs> lying is a... Uh, also lying, you must re remember, lying in order to benefit, on, in order to have a, on your benefit. Right? One reason you need this kind of thing. For example, there's an uh, analogy the hunter chasing a deer. Remember the story? The hunter chasing a deer, then you are on the somewhere. You saw the deer went to the, the left the left left direction. Hunter come later ask where the deer, deer has gone. You show the right direction. He says, Oh go this way. The hunter go that way. Are you lying? No. He's not lying. You're not lying. Because you cannot get any benefit in order to save the dear life. In order to save the hunter from the negative action, you say, oh, go this way. You are not lying. Okay, it's not lying. Therefore, you need to know the definition of lying. Yes, lying is very bad. <laughs> okay? Should not lie. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the determination of is a, uh, okay, anyway, uh, ethical discipline. Then, you know, uh, alcohol, so it's, a, it's better to take a precept. The, de the determination of the order of the three turning, in order to, the order of three uh, turning in, yeah, these are three things, right? Next one, the new one, the nature of the three turning. Ethical discipline has a six branches, right? Six. Concentration is the four branches. It's a four blissful abodes. Then four aspects of the four noble truths. Then I think uh, the four noble truths, everybody knew. So what are the six branches of the ethical discipline? What are they? With respect to this, the training in the ethical discipline has six branches. What are they? Number one, possession of the ethical discipline. Number two, restrained by the vows of individual liberation. Of the liberation. Then, number one, number two, number three, right? Number four, Number five, 
death of the even smallest I mean, number six correctly undertaking the training in the fundamental training implementation of the four. these are the five, six branches therefore please everybody you know if you i know uh, you you're not going to remember all the words actually you know you know the ethical discipline has a this kind of uh, features this kind of you know uniqueness then uh, what are the four branches of the concentration? Let me be very simple here. Sir. Four blissful abide. This means uh, how many realms we have? Law realm, which is desire, form, formless. Okay? Desire realms, form, formless realm. Form has uh, how many labels? There's a uh, four. Right, four. That means if you have a good concentration, then you will have is this kind of four the blissness. Without looking at your books, can you tell me the what are the sixteen uh, aspect of the four noble truth? Four aspect of the four noble truths. That means totally sixteen. Okay. What is the four aspect of the truth of suffering? Look at me, don't look at Lamrim. <laughs> huh? Look at me. Okay, then uh, origin of suffering. Don't look at books, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> yeah, you can look at uh, page number 342. For the truth of sufferings, impermanent. Number one, number two, suffering. Number three, emptiness, empty. Number four, selflessness. The origin of suffering is a four. What are they? Cause, origin, arising, condition, condition. The first uh, cessation is a four. What are they? Cessation, specification, excellent, freedom. Part has a four, what are they? Path, correctness, achievement, and deviation. This is so important because many books always explain the four noble truths. It never extends, you know, each of the four aspects, each of the four characteristics. Therefore, when you do meditation of four noble truths, first truth of suffering. Truth of suffering beginning with the first impermanence, then suffering. Then emptiness, then selflessness. There's an order. Okay? That doesn't mean 16 uh, aspects of the four noble truths. Each has a four. Okay? So, so since today we won't have a class for one month, who said two months? Who said two months? July has a class. No, no. July has a class with the uh, Kundili Rinpoche, right? No, no. I said class. <laughs> anyway, so you know, one month uh, I won't have a class here. Then I always tell, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Lamri is always with you. Okay. Since today, please, you know, start to read the book number two. Book number two, you use the book number two. Uh, uh, one day you read one page. <laughs> Total how many pages? 30, 30 pages. Uh, don't lie. <laughs> 30 pages, okay? So please, you know, since today you open the book number two, you know, the volume two, then read page uh, uh, 30. Then you're going to reach about the Bodhisattva path. Okay. Then, since uh, I have a class, then we will do uh, one hour, ten minutes for, you know, talking. Then we do meditation. Because right now, I think everybody, we have enough, you know, resource. We enough, you know, condition to practice or to meditate, do meditation. So, 
maybe 20 or 30 minutes meditation, then one hour talk. Then we both go together, you know, you know, class, uh, uh, teaching and practicing, teaching, practicing together. Okay.